Hey, greetings everybody, it's GleeCon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. As uh, we jump back in here, our last episode we read a chapter of Sylvanas and a chapter of Arthas, the Rise of the Lich King, where we looked at basically Arthas losing his power once and for all over Sylvanas and her attempted torture slash assassination of him, which he managed to escape with the help of um, his friends. The help of his friends, Kelzazad and uh, friends, if you want to call them that, and some little baby ghost girls and stuff like that. So, and then he retreated to go to Northwind, where the Lich, uh, the current Lich King, is calling for him. Your jewel. So, stay a while and listen as we wrap up one last little lore before we really can go bust out most of the Elven Blood Elven campaign. After that, this is called Servants of the Betrayer, and it sets up the next four or five levels. Four, I think. After reaching Outland, Kael'thas Sunstrider and Lady Vaj led their people through the cracked barren expanse of Hellfire Peninsula. Elodon Stormrage was nowhere to be found. For days, the Blood Elves and Naga wandered the desolation until they spied Warden Maiev's Shadow Song and her Watchers. Now, this might just be me, but I don't really remember Warden Maiev being a part of the Burning Crusade. I just might be forgetting her. Though Maiev had captured Illidan, she had been unable to find a way back to Azeroth. The gateway she had used was gone. I forgot that she even managed to capture him, but I do think there was a cutscene that showed that. Many other portals existed on Outland, but none of them led home. Maiev did not know the geography of the Shattered Realm, nor what dangers awaited her. She and her watchers treaded carefully until they discovered something quite unexpected. Soldiers from the Alliance. The remnants of the Sons of Lothar had established a bastion known as Honor Hold in Hellfire Peninsula. Maiev saw these refugees as her best chance of finding a way out of Outland. But before the Watchers could reach Honor Hold, Kael'thas and Lady Vaj struck. The Blood Elves and Naga emerged from the dust-blown wastes with blades drawn. Fierce though the Watchers were, they were hopelessly outnumbered. Kael'thas and Lady Vaj liberated Illidan and drove Maiev and her surviving followers into the wilds. Illidan suppressed the urge to hunt down Maiev. Chasing after the Warden on the Broken Isles had ultimately been a waste of time, and he would not repeat the same mistake twice, no matter how much he wanted to destroy her. Illidan appraised his new forces with satisfaction. The Blood Elves were highly trained and loyal fighters. Their leader, Kael'th the Sunstrider, was a gifted sorcerer, albeit wrestling with inner demons. Illidan immediately sensed the turmoil gnawing at the Elves' hearts. He bluntly told Kael'thus that there was no cure for their addiction to magic, However, that did not mean they were doomed to live in torment. Illidan promised to find a new source of magic for Kael'thas, one even greater than the Sunwell. It was not the answer Kael'thas had been hoping for, but it enticed him nonetheless. It wasn't often that he met someone with a greater mastery of magic than he had. Kael'thas had already come this far. He would cast his lot with Illidan. Following his liberation, Illidan formed a plan to seize Outland from Magtheridon and the Legion's forces. First, he would shut down the numerous gateways on Outland, portals through which the Legion sent reinforcements to the realm. Then Illidan would launch his army at Magtheridon's seat of power, the Black Temple in Shadow Moon Valley. The campaign was unforgiving. Illidan asked much of his followers and he gave little in the way of praise, but his unwavering sense of purpose and the sheer force of his will energized his soldiers and pushed them forward. As Illidan's storm rage closed in on the Black Temple, he found new allies among the broken. The twisted creatures were part of the Ashtung tribe, and they were led by a former Draenei exarch named Akama. He also sought to liberate the Black Temple from Magtheridon, albeit for different reasons. The stronghold had once been a sacred Draenei site. Akama saw reclaiming it as a means to redeem the broken in the eyes of the Draenei race. All right, so all this is really important, and things are going on. So even once World of Warcraft starts... Um, and yeah, it, it's things happen for a couple of years. You can see why this is their go-to for the first expansion. Like they've, there's just so much begging to be continued to talk about from before World of Warcraft even comes out. I also think it's interesting that the Broken are going to work with him. I wonder if we're going to get any Broken troops in Warcraft Three. Okay, cool. We got another episode in the pipe, five by five. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. And I will see you next time on Lore of Warcraft.